The Avengers plane is attacked by villains. Captain America, sitting at the helm, reports that they are shot down. The Avengers fall in the Central Park area. Iron Man opens the hatch and comes face to face with a villain named Bonecross. Stark offers the villain to surrender, but then Tony is attacked by Cross's partner, Black Death. Iron Man takes off, but Black Death throws an electric grenade at him. Tony's suit fails and he falls to the ground. Captain America sees Stark being dragged into the plane by a bone cross and black death. The villains deliver Iron Man to the warehouse in Patra. They descend on the Red Skull submarine. The villains want to join the League of Skull Villains. Amadok appears in an adaptoid suit. He tries to open Iron Man's suit, but Stark prudently installed burglar protection on his armor and angry Modok orders to deliver Iron Man to his laboratory to disassemble the armor piece by piece. The Skull leads the Bone Cross and the Black Death into the hall with weapons to demonstrate the power of his army. The mercenaries are impressed by the Skull's army. Vampires appear and attack the villains. The Cross and a friend scatter the vampires. They say they will inform Dracula about this. The alarm sounds. The Skull says that Atuma has arrived. The leader of Atlantis brought the Skull with that weapon. The Skull leaves Bone Cross and Black Death to look after Atuma's guards, he says. That if the weapon works as Atuma promised, then the war with the Avengers will end today. Modok is trying to disassemble Stark's suit in his laboratory. He connects power cables to it. The armor opens and Modok sees empty armor. He realizes that they were deceived. The warriors of Atlantis demand that the Black Death bring them food. The mercenary does not like it. The situation is heating up. Here Modok reports via intercom that the Bone Cross and Black Death are deceivers. Atlanteans grab the mercenaries and tear off their masks. Under the masks of Captain America and Tony Stark, Modok orders the Avengers to be delivered to him. Captain and Tony, they deal with the guards and try to contact the rest of the Avengers, but the Modok jammers block the operation of any electronics. Stark wants to take his armor. The captain says there is no time for this. Red Skull and Atuma arrive in the hall where the Captain and Tony were. Modok informs that Stark hacked his system and he cannot detect them. Atuma sends his warriors to comb the ocean. Captain America and Stark hide in the ventilation shaft. In the Avengers Tower, Hawkeye, disguised as Captain America, asks the Falcon how Steve and Tony are doing. The Falcon replies that the signal is moving, but he can't track them yet. Bone Cross and Black Death are sitting next to each other. Stark and Rogers try to disable Modok's jammers. They are discovered by Modok's soldiers and robots. Tony and Steve run down the corridor. Steve throws Tony on the back of one of the robots and he intercepts control. He shoots enemies with lasers and incapacitates robots. The heroes are attacked by vampires. The captain throws one of them into the porthole. On the glass cracks are coming. Stark breaks the porthole and the heroes hide in the ventilation again. The Skull who arrived at the scene of the fight is dissatisfied with Modok, who cannot find two people on his own submarine. Stark and Rogers see how the Skull picks up the Trident of Neptune, the weapon that Atuma brought. Tony has a plan and he surrenders to the Skull. Steve does not understand what Stark's plan is. The Skull uses the Trident. The skin of the submarine is bursting at the seams. The boat begins to fill with water. The skull now commands the oceans. Steve hits Tony in the face. The heroes start swearing. The heroes provoke a quarrel between the villains. Atuma snatches the trident from the hands of the skull. Modok attacks Atuma and tries to take away the trident. The skull tries to calm the villains. The captain throws the hatch cover at Modok and turns off the jammers. Steve rushes at the skulls. His armor returns to Stark. The skull creates a giant octopus out of the water and attacks Tony. But Atuma takes the trident from the skull. A huge hand starts shaking the submarine out of the water. The captain snatches the trident from Atuma and breaks it on his knee. Steve throws the wreckage and Tony burns them with a shot. The power of Neptune creates a huge whirlpool. The power of Stark's armor is not enough to pull out the heroes, but the captain managed to summon the Avengers. The Avengers save Tony and Steve. The Falcon is still in the Captain America costume, directing the plane home. In the Avengers Tower, Hawkeye rummages in the refrigerator. He makes himself a sandwich. 
Jarvis informs the hero that a dangerous object has appeared in the sky over the city. Clint hurries to deal with the danger, not forgetting to take a sandwich with him. Hawkeye flies the plane to the object. Jarvis reports that the object is friendly. Clint decides not to destroy the celestial body, but to catch it, he brings the plane to the object and it crashes into the tail of the plane. Barton lands the plane in Central Park near the fountain. Hawkeye sees that the unknown object was the Hulk. The Hulk says he doesn't remember anything, remembers only that the Earth will soon come to an end. The Hulk falls and presses Barton. After a while, Falcon, Barton, and the Captain skin the Hulk. Sam says that he has a severe head injury and memory loss. Stark contacts the Avengers. He rescues a wrecked tanker in the Sea of Japan. Stark asks friends to help the Hulk restore his memory while he deals with a storm raging at sea. The Hulk and the others come to the Green Giant's room. A collection of glass animals is on the shelves. Barton finds a bowling receipt in the Hulk's pocket and the Avengers head there. They see a dilapidated bowling building on the spot. A creature from the Fantastic Four rushes at the Hulk. A fight ensues, but the captain stops her. He asks Ben Grimm to tell what happened with the Hulk. The creature says that he and the Hulk were bowling as usual, but then the Hulk accused him of cheating and a fight broke out between them. Stark contacts the Avengers again. He says that the curtains are much stronger than he thought. His sensors record seismic activity around the world. Perhaps this is due to the Hulk. We urgently need to find out what happened to the Green Giant. The creature says that the Hulk left the bowling alley with Spider-Man. The Avengers find a spider near a cart with hot dogs. He says that he brought the Hulk here to feed. The Hulk ate all the hot dogs and ran away without paying. The spider says that the Hulk went to the rainbow that just hovered over the city. Seeing a rainbow, the Hulk jumps onto the roof of a skyscraper and disappears into it. The Avengers fly after him. The rainbow turns out to be a portal. The Avengers find themselves at the Palace of Glarion, the best builder in the galaxy. Glarion cordially welcomes the Hulk. He says he saw the Hulk recently. He took a glass figurine for his collection. The Hulk is sick and the larva of an unknown creature falls out of his mouth. The larva turns into a huge monster. The Avengers fight with him and tear him apart. Stark asks his friends to return to the tower as soon as possible. The Hulk takes the tentacle of the monster and the Avengers return to the tower. Along the way they see that the Earth has been covered by a wave of disasters, tsunamis, storms, earthquakes. In the tower, Thor scans the tentacle and notices traces of moon dust. Then he examines the bruise on the Hulk's face and says it's a hammer mark. Stark says that when he was doing research and Hal and Thor were arguing who was stronger, he advised them to find out on the moon. Apparently the brawlers went there. The Avengers are going to the moon. Tony says that he contacted the S.H.I.E.L.D. so that they would monitor the situation on Earth while the Avengers are away. The heroes arrive on the moon and see Thor fighting a huge monster. Thor says that this is a monster that devours planets. They found it together with the Hulk but their communicators failed. Then the Hulk suggested to Thor to hit him with a hammer so that the green flew to Earth, hence the bruise. The Avengers are fighting a monster. The Hulk notices his glass figurine in the dust, but it is swallowed by the monster. The Hulk rushes into the monster's mouth and tears it from the inside. Then the Hulk throws the monster's body into outer space. Among the debris, he finds a glass figurine. Stark says that natural disasters on Earth have stopped. The planet is saved. The Avengers are sitting in the kitchen in their tower. Hawkeye is going to eat. The Hulk is putting a glass dinosaur on the shelf at this time. Thor returns to Asgard. He was late for a celebration in his honor. In an empty banquet hall, Thor meets. Odin, the Allfather tells his son that he does not like the double life of Thor. He warns that people are weak and will one day disappoint Thor with their weakness. The conversation is interrupted by Heimdall. He says that Midgard has just disappeared from his field of vision. Something strange is happening on Earth. Thor returns to Earth with his father's permission. He sees that there is another building on the site of the Avengers Tower. Green rays strike Thor's chest and throw him to some monument. Thor looks up and sees that this is a huge statue of Doctor Doom. Thor is attacked by Doom robots. Hawkeye, Spider-Man, and Falcon come to his aid. 
Only now the heroes look different and call themselves differently. Barton asks Thor to summon lightning to destroy the remaining robots. The God of Thunder calls the elements and the robots fall to the ground. Barton says it's time to leave the battlefield. Clint's team calls themselves the Defenders. Defenders and Thor are sailing on a boat. Barton says that since Doom seized power, there are legends about the Thunderer that he can defeat the Duma and put an end to his rule. Natasha Romanova attacks the boat. She injures Sam. The boat docks. The Black Bride and robots are going to grab the Defenders. Thor sees incomprehensible in the sky the device throws its hammer at him. The hammer hits the force field. Thor fails to return his weapon. Parker throws smoke bombs and the Defenders manage. To escape, the Black Bride reports to the Duma that she managed to capture Thor's weapon. Thor and the Defenders come to the abandoned S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier. The spider senses danger and directs weapons at Thor. The shelter wall falls and Doom attacks the Defenders. Thor rushes at the enemy, but Doom shoots him with a beam from his chest and Thor loses consciousness. Thor and the others are led through the corridors of the Duma Citadel. The Black Bride warns Thor that if he tries to escape, she will kill the Defenders. Thor is brought to the throne room. He sees Captain America in a block of ice above the Duma throne. Thor throws the robots and rushes at Doom. He stops the blow with his palm and shoots Thor with a green ray. Doom managed to connect Stark's repulsors and Banner's gamma radiation. Doom says that neither the Avengers nor the Fantastic Four ever existed. Stark contacts Doom. He says that Thor's consultation is needed to study Mjolnir. Thor and Doom arrive at Stark's lab. Thor tries to summon his hammer, but Thor is securely encased in a power sphere. Thor sees Bruce Banner. Stark and Banner reveal that Doom saved them, saved Tony from Shrapnel, and created a protective suit for Bruce. Thor realizes that Doom went to the past and prevented his friends from becoming heroes. Doom demands that Thor give him the powers of Mjolnir. Thor attacks Doom, but he knocks him out. He orders to prepare Thor and the defenders for execution. Thor and the others are chained on the balcony of the Duma castle. The crowd below is demanding execution. Thor calls on people to fight the Duma's power. Doom orders the execution to begin. The executioner directs weapons at Thor, but the bride suddenly commands the offensive, Frank Castle. The Punisher was hiding under the mask of the executioner. He shoots at Duma and his robots. Natasha is also fighting with robots. Duma betrays Stark and turns off giant screens. Banner turns off the force. Field, and the hammer flies to the owner. Cracks are going on in the throne room on a block of ice with Captain America inside. Natasha frees Thor. Doom hits Thor with a shot from repulsors. Thor falls lifeless. His hammer falls next to him. Doom tries to lift Mjolnir, but it doesn't work out. Natasha thrusts an electric spike into Thor's chest and Thor wakes up. The heroes attack Doom and he hides in his shelter. He wants to go back to the past again to destroy the heroes. The time machine turns off the banner. Thor bursts into the hall. Doom grabs the banner, but Bruce says that Doom will not shoot because then Bruce will become the Hulk. Captain America appears and throws his shield at Duma. On the balcony of the Citadel, Stark reports that the Doom Network is collapsing all over the world. The heroes decide to send Thor at the moment when Doom first used the time machine. The banner sets the necessary coordinates. Thor prevents Doom's journey by destroying the time platform. Doom, enraged by the failure, refuses to experiment with time. Thor returns to the Avengers Tower and sees his friends. The Red Skull and Modok hack Stark's computer system. The villains need a combat simulation program that Stark developed. The program saves all the data about the battles and prepares a strategy for a new battle. The Skull watches videos with the Avengers victories. He sets new parameters to the program. The program reports that a vulnerability has been discovered in the Avengers defense. The program predicts the complete success of the villains. Modok, Dracula, and Atuma are sitting at the table. Atuma takes food with his hands. Modok and Dracula call him a savage. Atuma immediately rushes into the fight. The Skull enters the room and sees the fighting allies. He orders the program to give him the best course of action. With one shot, the Skull calms the brawlers and sits down at the table. Dracula asks to explain such agility. 
The skull shows Stark's hacked program, which is now sewn into his armor. He says that with this program, they will be able to defeat the Avengers. A clique of villains arrives in Washington by submarine. The villains demand the residents of the city to surrender or they will be destroyed. Dracula threatens the skull, but he ignores the threats. Atuma and the Atlanteans attack the White House. An adaptoid controlled by Modoc shoots down planes. Thor and Hulk land on the lawn in front of the White House. Skulls are attacked by Captain America. The captain falls and drops the shield, but the skulls are knocked to the ground by Iron Man. The Hulk beats up Atuma. The Falcon knocks down the adaptoid and he falls into the sea. The Widow says that the clique is fighting too smoothly this time. The Skull tries to summon the villains, but no one answers him. Then he starts the process of self-destruction of the submarine. The Avengers leave the ship. The Skull is thrown ashore by an explosion. He tries to contact the members of the clique again, but does not receive an answer. The Avengers take the Red Skull prisoner. The villain is brought to the main ship of the S.H.I.E.L.D. and imprisoned in a force field. Stark says that the Skull most likely set traps and it's not easy to remove the armor from him. The Hulk decides to try and gets an electric shock. The Avengers calm the Hulk. The Captain and the Widow feel a trick. Stark and the Falcon go to the destroyed Skull submarine. The rest of the Avengers must find other villains. Captain America remains with the Skull. The Captain says that the Skull's allies have fled. In response, the Skull notices that it is the Captain alone now. Dracula appears in the cell and attacks the Captain. The Vampire frees the Skulls, and the two of them knock the Captain out. Stark and the Falcon discover Stark's hacked program on the submarine. At this time, a clique of villains captures the Tricarrier's bridge. Modoc hacks the ship's systems. Tony orders the Avengers to urgently return to the main shield ship. Atuma grabs Fury, but Nick releases a smoke screen and escapes. The villains start quarreling again. The program informs the Skull that their chances are the chances of success are falling rapidly. The Avengers arrive on the Tricarrier. They destroy machine guns and cannons and the ship's defense system. On the bridge, the Skull destroys equipment. He orders the villains to attack the Avengers. Atuma fights with the Hulk. Dracula attacks Thor. The Tricarrier splits into three parts. Atuma and the Hulk fall into the sea. Dracula and Thor fight in the air. The Widow, Hawkeye, and Falcon break into the bridge. The Skull leaves, leaving Modoc to fight with the heroes. Stark finds Skulls in the corridor and attacks him, but the villain manages to deceive Tony and stab him in the back. Stark discovers the bound captain. On the bridge, the Widow and the others knock the adaptoid to the floor and hold it at gunpoint. Modoc informs the Skull that all the pawns are in place and he commands to release the captain. The platform with Steve tied falls from the Triker, Tony rushes to save his friend. He calls the Avengers. The Skull gathers a clique. Tony tries to stop the falling platform. Thor and Dracula return to Earth. Hulk and Thor pick up the falling platform and rescue the Captain. The Captain says that the Skull didn't need a tricarrier, but someone who was kept locked up there. The Red Skull frees Hyperion and invites him to join the ranks of a clique of villains. Tony Stark, the Falcon, and Captain America are in the training room. Stark developed jet boots for the Captain. The Captain does not like technical innovations, preferring to rely on his own strength, but still puts on a new gadget. Boots and Cap fly around the hall. Tony takes it all off on his phone. As a result, the Captain manages to get rid of the shoes and they knock Stark and the Falcon down. The Captain tells Tony that he would not have lasted a day without equipment. Stark and the Captain make a bet that if Tony does not last a day without equipment, he will train with the Captain for a week, and if Stark wins, the Captain will have to test new inventions. Sokol asks Tony to help with the calculations, but you can't use the computer. Sam gives a friend a notebook and pencil. When Stark wants to read the news on the tablet, the Captain appears and throws the newspaper to Stark. You can't even take the elevator now. After half an hour, Tony gives up and asks the captain to return his phone. Stark says that he is not the only one it depends on the equipment. The captain offers to conduct a training session. Stark says that he knows one place where there is no equipment and internet. Tony asks Thor and Hulk to stay in the tower. He asks them not to touch anything. Stark, 
Falcon, Barton, and the captain arrive on a desert island around which pterodactyls circle. Stark says that he programmed Jarvis to keep them out of their comfort zone for exactly a day. He adds that he chose a place where there are no dinosaurs. The captain is delighted. He calls his friends to the jungle to set up camp. The Hulk in the tower is going to cook popcorn. Thor uses his lightning bolts for cooking and blows up half of the kitchen. The Avengers are setting up camp. The captain is lighting a fire while Falcon and Stark are building a canopy. Barton is lying in a hammock. He is hungry. Falcon is sharing homemade cookies with friends. A herd of Triceratops appears and rushes at the heroes. One of the dinosaurs eats cookies. Stark orders Jarvis to send him the Iron Man armor, but Jarvis replies that there is still a ban on equipment. No Tony commands are valid. The Avengers stumble upon Tyrex in the forest. In the tower, Hulk and Thor have emptied the refrigerator. Jarvis reports that there is a box of chocolates left in Stark's closet. Thor rushes there. Hulk overtakes him, breaking through the walls. Tyrex will attack the Avengers, but the captain jumps on his head and closes his eyes. The dinosaur crashes into a tree and hides in the forest. The captain jumps to the ground. Tony says that the predator did not attack them. He was fleeing from something. The heroes go to check what scared the dinosaurs. They discover Justin's drilling machine hammer, who is drilling a mountain of vibranium. Hammer's drone appears and he talks to the heroes. He says that the extracted vibranium will provide him with a place in the clique of the villains of the Red Skull. The Avengers are surrounded by raptors controlled by Hammer. The captain wraps Stark with a vine and pushes him off a cliff. Tony lands at the bottom of the gorge and meets a strange creature consisting of stones. Hammer contacts the Skull and reports that he has caught the Avengers. The Skull doubts that Hammer will be able to keep the heroes at least until morning. The stone creature brings Stark to his city. The creature says his name is Grok. Stark asks the stone people to help him defeat the villains, but Grok says they are not warriors. Then Tony asks them to help build something for him. Grok agrees. Hammer sets raptors on the captain, Falcon, and Barton, but then Stark appears in stone armor. He deals with dinosaurs and frees friends. Stark thanks the stone people. Grok orders his countrymen to destroy Hammer's cars. Red Skull contacts Hammer. He is disappointed with Hammer's failure. Enraged Justin shoots at the captain, but Stark obscures a friend with his body. Tony knocks Hammer out. In the morning, Grok and the stone people thank the Avengers and present them with a huge toad as a gift. Tony and the others return to the tower and see that Thor and the Hulk have made a complete mess. An irritated Hawkeye walks along the Avengers Tower. He stops at the door to the Hulk's room and suddenly hears a woman screech from there. Clint kicks the door open and sees the Hulk sitting on the floor. The Hulk is watching an old horror movie on TV. Hawkeye throws an empty jar of pickled cucumbers at the Hulk. He is angry at the Hulk for eating everything. The Hulk catches the jar and asks how Barton found out that it was the Hulk who ate the cucumbers. Clint replies that only the green one could destroy the kitchen like that. The Hulk confirms that he ate everything and pushes the archer away so as not to interfere with watching the movie. Clint takes his favorite glass unicorn Hulk figurine from the shelf. The Hulk grabs Barton and turns him over. An explosive arrow falls out of Barton's quiver. The Hulk puts the figure in place and throws Clint away. The arrow explodes and the Hulk does not have time to catch the falling arrow. A figurine, a unicorn, is broken into small pieces. Hawkeye rushes down the corridor of the tower, being chased by an angry Hulk. Hulk and Barton come running into the living room, where their skirmish is stopped by Captain America and Iron Man. They ask friends to reconcile, but they refuse. From the roof of a neighboring building, two aliens are watching the quarrel. They contact their host, the alien Mojo, who demands to deliver the Hulk to him as soon as possible. The Hulk grabs Barton, and they fall out of the tower window together. Tony flies next to them and tries to reconcile again. At this moment, the aliens use a teleporting beam to transfer the Hulk and Barton to the Mojo ship. The Hulk and Hawkeye find themselves in a cell. Mojo announces the beginning of his show of the Mojapocalypse on big screens. Barton and the Hulk are pushed into the gladiatorial arena. An alien insect attacks the archer. Barton shoots the monster with a bow, but the monster does not take arrows. The Hulk just stands with folded arms. 
Mojo announces that the current champion of the show Torgo will also participate in the fight today. Clint asks the Hulk to help him. The Hulk deals with the monster with one blow. Torgo appears behind the Hulk. He beats the Hulk and he breaks through the walls and flies into outer space. The crowd chants the name of the champion. Hawkeye is left alone with Torgo. The champion chases Barton around the arena. Mojo doesn't like it and he orders the Hulk to be teleported back to the arena. Hawkeye falls and Torgo raises his fists over him, but the returning Hulk attacks the champion and throws him into the wall. Torgo loses the fight and Mojo declares him the new champion. Torgo returns for revenge and beats the Hulk. He loses consciousness. The Hulk wakes up in the cell. Torgo is sitting in the next cell. He says that Mojo forces him to fight in the arena otherwise he will destroy Torgo's home planet. Mojo adjusts the results of the fights and is fueled by the energy from the broadcast. Mojo announces the start of a new fight Halle Hawkeye must fight with Torgo and other fighters again. The Hulk is going to destroy, but Clint says that the enemy is not Torgo and the other prisoners. The fight against everyone begins. The last survivor wins. The Hulk fights with Torgo. While Clint fights with the rest of the fighters, Torgo uses a missile strike and drives the Hulk falls into the ground of the arena. The energy overflows Mojo. The Hulk rises and hits Torgo. He flies into a huge screen and falls into the arena. Clint ties Torgo. He asks to stop Mojo. The owner of the arena demands that the Hulk and Clint fight each other. Friends refuse and Mojo's servants teleport them back to Earth. Now Mojo's ship is attacking Earth. The Avengers are fighting the aliens. Hulk and Barton are jumping on the Avengers Tower. He is going to throw Hawkeye on Mojo's ship. Before throwing the Hulk apologizes to a friend. Clint apologizes for the broken unicorn figurine. Hulk and Hawkeye break into Mojo's studio. He calls Torgo and orders to deal with the violators. Torgo grabs Mojo's chair and is about to break it. The villain activates the collar on Torgo's neck and electrocutes him. Mojo shoots electricity at the Hulk. Barton drops the screen on Mojo and orders him to sit quietly. Mojo throws Barton out of the window, but Clint is caught by the Hulk. Mojo descends into the arena on his chair, but the archer notices the control panel in the bottom of the chair. He shoots at a vulnerable spot and the Hulk sends Mojo into a huge screen with a punch. Mojo teleports from the scene of the fight. The Avengers free the fighters and they go home. In the evening, Barton goes into his room and finds a bunch of boxes of cucumbers, but they are all empty. Clint finds a note from the Hulk, who apologizes for eating everything again. At the UN building, crowds of people protest against Victor Doom's speech. Nick Fury brings the Avengers to the office of the ruler of Latveria. Doom says that a clique of Red Skull villains are hunting him, so he needs a bodyguard. Doom wants Captain America to protect him. Hulk offers to just beat Doom, but the captain does not allow it. Doom he is under diplomatic immunity as a sign of his good intentions. Doom disables all weapons on his armor and leaves the entire arsenal on the chair. The captain and Doom head to the boardroom, Iron Man, then the others patrol the vicinity of the building. Stark reports a zero threat. The captain brings the Duma to the hall. The dictator is met by a disgruntled crowd. Hawkeye suggests simply retreating and giving the Duma to the people, but Captain America forbids it because everyone should have freedom of speech. The Duma they give the floor and he begins his speech. The ceiling collapses and Hyperion flies into the hall. He attacks Doom, but the captain manages to shield him with a shield. Doom uses sound amplifiers and throws Hyperion away. The villain is stunned and cannot make out a single word. The Hulk bursts into the hall and attacks the supervillain. Doom and the captain hide in the tunnels under the building. The captain contacts Fury. He wants to take Doom to a safe place. An adaptoid breaks into the tunnels and attacks Doom. Victor gets an electric charge in his chest and falls. The Hulk breaks through the tunnel wall and grabs the robot. The captain lifts Doom and leads him on. Rogers wants to take Doom to the Avengers Tower since it's safe there. Doom refuses at first, but then agrees with the captain's arguments. At this moment, they are attacked by Dracula. The Vampire King throws Doom away and is going to drink the captain's blood. But Thor appears to save Steve and Victor. 
Thor fights Dracula while the Captain and Doom are moving to the tower. Suddenly the tunnels are flooded with water. Doom and the Captain are carried away by the stream. Atuma attacks Doom, but the Captain manages to protect his ward. Hawkeye and Falcon come to the rescue of the Captain. They attack Atuma, giving the opportunity to take Doom away. Steve and Doom climb the stairs. Atuma rushes after them, but he is stopped by Barton's ice arrow. Doom and the Captain get out into the street. The Red Skull attacks them. Hyperion arrives and impresses Iron Man into the building. The Skull shoots at the Captain from all guns, but Doom covers Rogers with himself. Doom falls to the ground. The Captain lifts him on his shoulders and carries him to the Avengers Tower. The villains try to stop the Captain, but the Avengers clear pass and discard the villains. Finally, Steve brings Doom to the Tower. He asks Jarvis to diagnose. Defense systems are activated in the tower. Laser cannons attack Hyperion. The protective field reliably covers the tower from attacks. Modok tells the Skull that the tower is too well protected and the Avengers are already preparing for a new attack. The Skull orders his accomplices to retreat. In the tower, Doom regains consciousness. He only pretended to be wounded. Mechanical manipulators capture the captain, not letting him stop Doom. The villain hacks the Avengers computer and downloads programs and access codes to the S.H.I.E.L.D. computers. When the rest of the Avengers arrive in the tower, Doom already manages to teleport. Doom inserts a flash drive with stolen data into his computer in his castle. Suddenly an image of the Avengers appears on the screen. Captain America tells Doom that they have figured out his plan and Tony managed to protect the Avengers files and in return infected the files stolen by Doom with a virus. Many images of Iron Man appear on the Duma monitors. The lights go out in the Duma castle. In the Avengers tower, Stark conducts an experiment. He puts his new invention indestructible shackles on Thor and the Hulk. The Hulk and Thor cannot destroy them. The rest of the Avengers look at all their attempts with interest. Hawkeye eats popcorn with appetite. While the Hulk cannot prevent him, Thor wants to use lightning to destroy the shackles. Captain America asks him to stop. There is a powerful rush. The heroes fall to the floor. Thor says that it's not his lightning, appears in the center of the hall. Odin, Thor's father, one orders his son to return to Asgard. Thor refuses. He wants to stay with friends. One notices the shackles on his son's hands. The Falcon says that no one has managed to destroy them yet. One breaks the shackles with his spear. At this moment Odin is attacked by the Hulk. The Lord of Asgard breaks through the wall and disappears into the hole. Thor beats the Hulk. One appears in the breach. He is very pleased and delighted with the power of the Hulk. One demands to take him to the banquet hall so that he can figure out how to test the heroes. At this moment Jarvis reports that the UN building has been attacked by an energy creature named Sex. The captain orders to prepare the plane, but one teleports the Avengers to the place of battle. The heroes fall out of the portal. The Hulk falls on the Widow. Zack shoots the Hulk with lightning. Stark says that the monster absorbs all the energy and grows. Thor's hammer is powerless against the monster. The Hulk jumps on Zask and starts beating. One releases lightning from his spear into the villain and Zask bursts out of four overloading. Thor tells his father that it was a fight of the Avengers. At this moment in the underworld, the monster Mongo realizes that Odin has finally left Asgard. One takes the Avengers to Central Park. He wants the heroes to prove that they are worthy of his respect. One challenges the Avengers to a duel. The Lord of Asgard easily copes with the Hulk. Thor attacks his father. The rest of the Avengers join the battle. They attack Odin all together, but he repels all attacks. Mongo appears and attacks Odin. He throws Odin to the ground and steps on his back. Thor knocks down the monster and helps his father up. Odin says he is weakening. Mangog says he needs Odin's eye with which he will enslave the whole world. The Avengers attack Mangog. The Hulk strikes a crushing blow and Mangog flies away. The monster steps on Thor and strikes with a sword. Thor stops the hammer blow. Mangog, absorbing Odin's power, becomes bigger and bigger. He rushes at Odin. Thor saves his father. Stark offers to take Mangog away from Odin. One does not want to stay away from the battle and attacks Mangog. His spear collides with the monster's sword. A strong explosion throws the Avengers away. 
Mangog picks up Odin's spear and connects with his sword. He throws Thor away. Mangog is filled with Odin's power. Odin asks the monster to spare the earth. The Avengers go on the attack again, but they can't do anything against Mangog. Odin tells Thor that the Avengers need his help. Tony says they need to disarm Mangog. Iron Man shoots the weapon out of the monster's paws and Hawkeye shoots the spear out of the sword. The Hulk rushes at Mangog and beats him. Odin and the Avengers are preparing for a new fight. Thor throws Mangog to the ground. The Hulk jumps on top of him. Stark brings shackles and shackles Mangog. Odin thanks the Avengers. He sends Mangog back to hell. Hawkeye wants to show Odin an amusement park. The Avengers play bouncers, Tony Stark and Hawkeye against Captain America, Falcon and Hulk. Barton knocks out the opponent's players with ease. Tony says he has developed a new program, the Stark Probability System. The program analyzes the behavior of fighters and predicts how best to act for victory. The captain believes that it is impossible to predict the result of the fight because there is the human factor. He offers to play again. Now they are playing with laser balls, the captain successfully dodges the balls but tony tells barton to throw the ball under steve's feet the captain will fall to the floor barton knocks out the rest of the players hyperion flies into the tower and takes the hulk with him the avengers rush after each other the hulk and hyperion fall into the water and fight there stark says that his system reports a probable ambush of atuma at the bottom tony asks the falcon to create a funnel sam directs his drone red wing into the water at the bottom of the vortex created by the falcon the avengers they see atuma and the atlanteans the captain and iron man attack atuma thor joins them atuma informs the skull that everything is not going according to plan and hides in the water hyperion flies into the funnel and immediately gets hit with a hammer hyperion is attacked by hawkeye then the hulk rushes at him Hyperion wounds the Hulk in the arm. The Skull orders Hyperion to withdraw from the battle, as he is very likely to lose. Hyperion flies away. The Avengers pick up the wounded Hulk and go to the tower. Hyperion returns to the Skull submarine. The Skull praises Hyperion for playing his role perfectly. In the tower, Tony informs the others that a flash of alien energy of the Tesseract was recorded before the attack of the clique. The Avengers do not notice that a small skull robot has connected to Stark's computer. The Falcon puts a bandage on the Hulk's arm. Jarvis calculates the location of the Tesseract. The Avengers see a skull submarine pop up in the bay. It rises into the air and flies away. The Widow notices the spy robot and destroys it. The Avengers realize that the clique has intercepted the coordinates of the terrorist attack. Tony and the others give chase. Stark personally drives the plane. The Falcon says that he would fly faster, but Tony says that his program low estimates the chances of the Falcon. Sam says that Tony is fixated on his new program. Stark says that he will no longer allow the Skull to steal his technology and programs. The plane is attacked by an adaptoid. It cuts the plane into two parts. Hulk and Thor hold the halves together. Tony sends the Falcon after the Tesseract. The Widow says that Hyperion is catching up with them. Stark sends Thor to battle with him. Adam, Skull, and Modok are watching the battle from the bridge. The Avengers rush in. Hyperion and Thor fly through the windows. The Skull's flying submarine begins to fall. The Skull orders the Adaptoid slow down the fall. Hulk sends Atuma to the ceiling with a blow. Barton and Widow attack Modok. Captain America fights with the Skull. Dracula will attack the Falcon. The Skull Ship will fall in the desert. Hulk attacks Atuma. Hyperion fights with Thor. Widow and Hawkeye fight with Modok. The Captain warns Tony that the team is being stretched, trapped. Skull teleports and Atuma appears in front of the Captain. The Falcon is attacked by an Adaptoid. Hyperion attacks the Hulk. The Widow and Barton will have to fight Dracula. Modok shoots Thor with lasers. Skull and Stark fight in the canyon. Tony defeats Skulls and disables his armor. Tony flies away. He says that the fight will end soon. Stark arrives according to the coordinates of the Tesseract, but he is not there. The Skull did not steal the coordinates, but replaced them, so he lured the Avengers into a trap. The Skull armed with the Tesseract attacks Tony. The program predicts Tony's defeat. The rest of the Avengers also almost lost. The 
Villains bring the defeated heroes and throw them next to Stark. The skull suddenly falls to the ground. Modok says that the attack is unstable. It needs to be steadied. Hyperion says that the Avengers need to be destroyed. Otherwise, they will come for the clique. The skull fires two rockets, one at Los Angeles, the other at Las Vegas. The clique teleports. Stark says that according to his calculations, only one city will be saved. The captain says that the Avengers can do everything. Captain Falcon and Hulk fly after one rocket. The Hulk throws the captain and he crashes into the rocket with a shield. The shield absorbs the explosion. The city is saved. Stark, Thor, Widow, and Barton pursue the second rocket. Tony, he hands the glove with the repulsor to Barton. He asks Thor to hit the suit with lightning. Electricity charges the suit. Barton shoots so that the rocket hits the Iron Man's sight. Tony shoots down the second rocket. In the tower, Tony looks at the record of the lost battle. He tells the captain that the terrorist attack cannot be found yet. The captain calms his friend. He says that they are Avengers and will cope with everything. The Avengers leave Dimension Z on their plane. Stark asks everyone to fasten up. Since the transition from one dimension to another can be accompanied by shaking, the plane gets into space turbulence, the unfastened Hulk hits the wall, the Avengers return to their dimension, the Falcon says that the alarm sensors are off scale, the heroes see that a ship is hovering over the city Galactus, the captain says that he was developing a strategy in case Galactus returns, but Iron Man has his own plan. He leaves the plane and goes straight to the spaceship. Tony asks Jarvis to adjust the suit to the frequency of Galactus. Tony manages to talk to a super being. Galactus immobilizes Tony with rays from his eyes. Stark disappears in a flash of light. Galactus disappears with him, and Stark's disappearance is seen by other Avengers. The Avengers cannot believe in Stark's death. The Falcon asks Jarvis to show a recording of Tony's disappearance. He says that Tony teleported, Sam detects Stark's signal, Mstigit makes a hyper jump and exits hyperspace in the Dabari system. Hundreds of transport ships with the inhabitants of the planet fly away from the planet Dabari. The Avengers notice a Galactus ship near the surface. Mstigit attacks more one ship. The Avengers ship is damaged and it is captured by a transport beam. The Ships dock and the Avengers meet the Guardians of the Galaxy. The Guardians help DeBerry with evacuation. Captain America says they are looking for their friend and do not want to interfere with the Guardians. All the heroes are flying over the surface of the planet DeBerry. Suddenly they are attacked by the Herald Galactus. The Avengers are surprised to recognize Tony Stark in the Herald. Stark smashes the cockpit of the Guardian ship with shots. Hawkeye manages to catch Groot flying out of the window. Drac believes that Tony betrayed friends to serve Galactus. Stark attacks the Guardian ship again and destroys its weapons. The Guardians abandon their ship and pursue Stark on jetpacks. The Avengers rush in pursuit of the Guardians. Thor fights Drax. The Hulk fights Groot. The rocket clings to the wing of the Falcon and drops it to the ground. Hawkeye shoots Gamora, but she repels the arrow with a sword. The captain tries to persuade the Star-Lord to stop attacking Tony. Hulk and Groot are fighting at the bottom of the gorge. They see that two Dabari ships grappled during takeoff. Tony Stark appears and saves the ships from wreckage. Captain America and Star-Lord see this. Galactus appears on his ship. Huge cables bite into the soil. All the Dabari ships have already left the planet. Now the Guardians and the Avengers have to stop Galactus. The heroes break into pairs. Hulk and Groot break the cables of Galactus with their bare hands. Rocket and Falcon shoot them with weapons. Drac and Thor use daggers and a hammer. Gamora finds a weak spot in Galactus' car. She tells Barton that if you let an arrow in the right place, then a chain reaction will go. Clint throws an arrow, but Stark stops it. Barton falls from a flying motorcycle and falls right on a metal spike. Tony will save him from death. Barton aims at him. Tony says that Galactus needs to be fed. Clint understands that Stark has a plan. The Avengers, they retreat, but the Guardians of the Galaxy continue to attack Galactus. Stark throws the guards onto the rocks and Groot saves them from death. Groot calls a huge tree and branches bind Stark. Star-Lord wants to free Stark with a shot from a weapon but the Avengers prevent him. 
A fire breaks out under Galactus' ship. The Dabari planets begin to collapse. Galactus feels an excess of power. His ship is overloaded with the planet's excess energy. The rocket says that the planet was destined to explode without Galactus. Galactus asks for help from his herald, but Stark refuses. He soars into the sky and leaves the planet. The Guardians and Avengers follow him. The planet explodes. The heroes from the Borat of the Guardian ship see a sleeping Galactus flying in space. Stark informs the heroes that he managed to find an unstable planet, and Dabari immediately evaluated as soon as they saw Galactus. Tony says that he could not tell his friends about his plan, because Galactus listened to all the frequencies. The Guardians thank the Avengers and they return to Mstigit. The Hulk finally gives five to Groot. Stark and Falcon are using manipulators to try to place an unstable particle in a sealed box. Suddenly Sam's phone starts ringing. Hulk brings a huge cabinet with particles. He asks what is so dangerous in them. Stark replies that one such particle can reduce the entire planet to the size of a... Sam's phone keeps ringing. Hulk wants to answer, but Sam stops him, saying that he just bought a new phone. The Hulk takes out his mobile phone and puts it on the table next to the manipulators. Sam looks at the phone screen and changes his face. He says he urgently needs to get out and runs out. The Hulk's phone will fall and touches the box. An unstable particle will fall, but the Ant-Man who appeared picks her up. He puts the box in the closet. The Hulk inhales a particle flying in the air and instantly decreases. The alarm goes off. Sam returns and says that his mom has arrived. The rest of the Avengers come running. The captain asks why the alarm was turned on. The Falcon reports that his mother has arrived and Stark tells about the reduced Hulk. Hawkeye talks to Ant-Man, but suddenly something knocks him down. Ant-Man says that he will shrink and find the Hulk. But it is more important to return the unstable a particle. The doorbell rings. Sam says that it's his mom. She doesn't know that Sam is an Avenger. Tony escorts Sam and the others out the door. The captain says that Sam almost allowed the destruction of the Earth because of his lies. Sam goes to change clothes and asks friends to play along with him. Barton agrees to remain silent only if Sam gives him a fresh batch of mom's cookies. In the laboratory, Stark scans the floor, but cannot detect the Hulk. Hank Pym says that he will shrink and find the Hulk, and with the help of an adapter he will hold an unstable particle to a sealed box. Pym decreases. The Falcon in his room removes all the posters with the Avengers. The Captain advises his friend to be honest. Sam and the Avengers meet Sam's mom at the elevator. He wants to take her away right away, but mom wants to meet the Avengers. The reduced Hank Pym says that he is going to a strong signal from the Hulk, but he is prevented by Stark's nanoworkers. Tony replies that the cleaners help keep the tower clean. Hank finds the Hulk. He fights with the nanoworkers. The Hulk sees a particle and breaks it. He and Pym become normal size, but now the broken particle reduces and increases the other's objects in the laboratory. Sam and his mom and the Avengers are taking pictures in the kitchen, but suddenly nanoworkers enlarged with Pym particles appear behind them. Stark asks Pym how bad it is. He says that the particles have scattered all over the building. It is impossible to predict what may happen. The particles need to be returned to a sealed container before they leave the building. Tony orders Jarvis to block the tower. Hank says that the higher the light temperature, the easier it is to see the particles. He orders Jarvis amplifies the light in the tower. Now the particles are visible in the air. The Avengers are fighting with the grown-up nanoworkers. Stark and Pym come running. Stark explains to Sam that the Hulk broke one of the particles and it scattered around the building. Now yellow particles increase objects and blue ones decrease. Tony says that Sam needs him in the laboratory. A blue particle appears behind Sam's mom. Pym rushes to help and the particle reduces it. Stark looks at the remaining. On the floor adapter for capturing particles, the reduced Pym cannot return to normal size. Stark uses an adapter to reduce robots and suck out particles. Pym contacts him. He says he will not be able to increase until Stark pumps unstable particles out of him. The captain orders Sam and Hawkeye to take Mrs. Wilson to a safe place. The yellow particle enlarges Hawkeye. 
Sam takes mom away. Hulk finds a huge cookie. Thor fights with robots, but the particle reduces his hammer. The rest of the Avengers continue to fight with robots. Stark asks him to change into armor and stop lying to his mother. Suddenly Stark shrinks and disappears. Tony finds himself in the microcosm next to Pym. Captain America he tells Sam again that his lies have made the situation critical. Sam improves the Pym adapter and returns to the living room. He reduces the robots and returns the normal size to Barton and Thor's hammer. Now the Avengers have another problem. The Hulk has grown to the size of a skyscraper. Sam improves the Pym vacuum adapter and makes a magnet for Pym particles from the captain's shield. The Falcon and Mom go to the microcosm. There they find Stark and Pima. The Falcon returns Tony and Hank to their normal size and pulls particles from the captain's shield. Sam flies up to the giant Hulk and pulls particles out of him. He shrinks and falls into the water. The Falcon quickly flies into the tower. He flies into the laboratory and throws the adapter into the cabinet with nanoparticles prepared by Pym. Sam's mom says goodbye to the Avengers. Sam promises not to lie to her anymore. They all take a photo together. Falcon and Hawkeye arrive at the Stark Industries building. Barton says that someone wants to steal the fuel cells that Stark is developing. Friends run into one of the halls and see the Avengers in strange clown outfits. Barton takes Sam into the corridor, but then they are attacked by Iron Man in ridiculous armor. Sam and Clint, they evade the attacks of other Avengers. Falcon and Barton fly to the roof. Clint says that the Avengers are being manipulated. He points to the hoops on the heads of friends. Falcon wants to knock the hoop off Tony's head, but the archer stops him as it can fry Tony's brains. The hole breaks into the roof. Barton says that for everything this is the Ringmaster. The Falcon and Barton are caught by Iron Man. The Ringmaster appears. He introduces the participants of his circus to Barton. Iron Man throws the Falcon at Clint and hides with his gang and the Avengers. Clint sees a shield tricarrier flying over the building and runs away. The Falcon flies after him. They talk on the roof of the building. The Falcon tries to understand why Barton does not want to inform the S.H.I.E.L.D. about the captured Avengers. Barton replies that he is to blame for this and must fix everything himself. Sam flies off to the Tri-Carrier, leaving the Archer alone. Barton is watching a girl in a raincoat at the port. He ties her up and tries to find out where the Ringmaster took the Avengers. A girl named Princess Python does not want to talk to Barton. A giant mechanical snake breaks out of one of the containers and attacks Clint. A falcon appears, but the snake throws it into the water. Clint takes the scent Ringmaster Hulk. Barton wakes up in a criminal circus. He dodges lasers and missiles. The ringmaster from the loudspeakers says that he wants to avenge Clint for betrayal. A falcon arrives and destroys laser cannons and guns. He returns Barton his bow. Falcon and Barton find themselves in the circus arena. The ringmaster has prepared a deadly number for each Avenger. The captain is tied up and placed in a water tank. Thor threatens to be crushed by a huge block. The Hulk is chained to a giant toy that hits him on the head. Black Widow is suspended under the very dome of the circus, and Iron Man loaded a huge cannon. Sokol and Clint decide to free the captain first. A stunt archer tries to prevent them. Sam manages to break the tank and free the captain. Clint saves Natasha falling from a height. He wants to remove the hoop from her, but gets an electric shock. The ringmaster says that only circus performers can remove these hoops. Sam frees the Hulk. A cannon shot is fired and Stark falls into the audience. Thor, the Widow, and the Hulk step on the Falcon and Clint. Iron Man joins them. Thor knocks the Falcon to the ground. Natasha chases Clint. The Hulk grabs the Falcon. The ringmaster appears again and orders the Archer Trickster to complete the performance. The villain shoots at Clint, but he knocks down the arrow. The Peony Princess appears and attacks the Trickster and the Ringmaster. The Hulk and Thor fight with a giant snake. Clint throws steel balls and breaks blue stones on the hoops of friends. The Avengers come to their senses. 
the ringmaster appears with his gang and attacks the Avengers, while the Hulk fights with the strongman, Barton and the Archer Trickster arrange a duel. Barton uses explosive arrows and attacks the enemy. The Falcon is chased by a mancor. Sam easily evades and the villain is imprinted into the ground. The Widow and the Captain fight with the Acrobat twins. Thor throws a hammer in the face of a strongman. A Falcon flies into the tent. A mancor is chasing him. Stark asks the Python Princess for help. The girl turns around and sees that the Archer Trickster took aim at Barton lying unconscious. The Trickster offers the Princess to return to the circus or die. The Princess refuses to return and the Archer shoots an arrow. An arrow knocks down a mancor flying by. It distracts the villains and the Avengers deal with them. The Archer shoots down the safety net and it covers the ring of the Master and his gang. The archer removes the mask and it turns out that it was Hawkeye. The villains are led away by S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Barton says that he was once a member of a circus gang, but decided to leave criminal activity. During the robbery he raised the alarm, the bandits were arrested, and Barton took Fury under his wing, and Clint became an Avenger. Forever. The Avengers arrive in the vicinity of the destroyed base of the villain's clique, the Widow says that the coordinates of this place were provided by the S.H.I.E.L.D. The Captain says that this is the first mention of the clique since she took possession of the Tesseract. Iron Man scans the area with infrared sensors from the air. Modok, Hyperion, and Atuma teleport to the base. Modok orders Hyperion to pick up the Iridium hidden at the base. Hyperion says he hears something. Atuma says it's all stupid fears. Hyperion catches an arrow near Atuma's face. The arrow explodes and blinds the villains. The Avengers break into the base. The Hulk beats Hyperion. Thor attacks Atuma. Modok opens a portal and summons the warriors of Atlantis. Stark orders the Falcon to attack from the flank. The captain tries to warn Tony against such a step. Hyperion beats the Hulk and the Green Giant crashes into the Flying Falcon. They break through the wall of the base and fall into the gorge. Modok opens the portal and leaves with the rest of the villains and warriors. The Wounded Falcon is brought to the Avengers Tower and placed in the infirmary. Stark resigns his authority as the leader of the Avengers. He asks the captain to lead the team. An alarm sounds. Jarvis reports that he was hacked. Justin Hammer appears on the monitors in front of the Avengers. He panics. An adaptoid broke into his factory and steals weapons. Tony stays in the tower to monitor Sam's condition. The captain and the others, they go to the rescue of the Hummer. The Avengers arrive at the scene. Thor breaks the entrance so that no one escapes. The captain orders the Widow to disarm the Modok soldiers. Hawkeye neutralizes the Technopath himself. Modok uses the power of the Tesseract and creates a huge robot. The robot knocks down the Hulk and Thor. The captain orders the Widow to deal with the robot and Modok. Natasha jumps on the robot and his weapon shoots at him. The robot falls apart. Modok escapes into the portal and takes the hammer's weapon. The Avengers fly on an Avenger and talk to Tony via video link. He tells them the current location of the Modok in the Arizona desert. A rocket hits the plane. The engine lights up. The Widow barely holds the steering wheel. The Hulk points to a huge red skull device in the middle of the desert. The skull shoots at the Avenger. The Avengers jump out of the burning plane. The Captain orders the Widow and Hawkeye will destroy the skull's weapons. Hulk and Thor will restrain Atuma and Hyperion. And the Captain himself will deal with Modok soldiers and vampires. The Hulk is preparing to fight with Atuma. But then Thor arrives and hammers the Lord of Atlantis into the ground. The Hulk advises Thor to look to the left. He turns his head and is knocked down by Hyperion. The Skull orders not to let the Avengers near the device until it is fully charged. The Captain contacts Tony and explains the situation to him. Tony says that he contacted the S.H.I.E.L.D. and they will help contain the threat while he understands the Skull plan. The Captain says that they need. Iron Man on the battlefield. The Falcon comes to his senses. He is going to fly to help his friends. Stark dresses the Falcon in a new suit. Sam asks Tony to fly with him, but Stark refuses, saying that today he is only a coordinator. He considers himself a burden for the Avengers. Sam says that the team needs Tony Stark, Iron Man, everything. Sam is flying away. 
The skull shouts that the Tesseract is awakening. The captain orders Barton to climb up and destroy the Tesseract. Thor raises the archer to the artifact. Barton shoots, but the falcon that appeared knocks down the arrows, saying that Tony has asked not to break the skull machine yet. The machine of the Red Skull opens portals to other worlds. The skull says that each member of the clique will get a whole world to conquer. Dracula a world where the sun never rises, for Tumo a world covered with water, for Hyperion an advanced civilization, Modok Skull gives Asgard. The captain orders the Avengers to hold the line and keep the villains out of the portals. The captain fights with Dracula and his vampires, Hyperion is stopped by the Hulk, he stuns the villain with blows to the head, Thor blocks Modok's path, Thor destroys the Adaptoid with one blow. An angry Modok directs the Skull Machine at the Avengers, but the Skull forbids it. Stark and a lot of his suits arrive. The Skull shoots at one of the suits, but it turns out to be empty. Stark's suits help the Avengers in battle. Stark explains the Skull's plan to everyone. As soon as the villain steps into the portal, the Tesseract will destroy him. Tony in an invisibility suit grabs the Skull and imprints it into the tank with the Tesseract. Tony shoots from the repulsor on his chest. An explosion is heard. The skull machine is damaged and burns. Tony lifts Stark off the ground. The skull comes to and puts the tesseract in his suit. The skull absorbs the energy of the skull and soars into the night sky. The skull machine collapses. The wreckage threatens to sink the Avengers and the clique under it. Tony suggests that the villains unite to destroy the skulls together. Modok transfers the villains and heroes to the Avengers Tower. Tony again suggests joining forces, but Hyperion attacks the Avengers and a fight begins. Hulk fights Hyperion, Thor with a Tumma, Hawkeye shoots an arrow for with an arrow to Dracula. The Widow jumps on Modok. She says that he could have left the Avengers to die, but for some reason he saved them. The Widow and Modok teleport. The captain leads Tony down the corridor of the tower. Stark's chest is damaged. Jarvis manages to restore the reactor in Tony's chest. The captain says that Tony needs to put on a suit, but all the costumes were destroyed in the battle with the skull. The captain is sure that Stark will come up with something and runs away. Tony controls the iron manipulators. He shackles Atuma and brings him to the reactor. Atuma loses consciousness. Dracula grabs the Falcon and Barton. At this moment, Tony turns on the fluorescent lights. Dracula's clothes start burning. Hyperion fights with the Hulk. The villain punches the Hulk in the face and blinds with a shot of lasers from his eyes. At this moment, Tony says over the speakerphone that he downloaded the combat protocols of his armor from the tower interface. Now the whole tower is his suit. The manipulator grabs Hyperion and throws him into a water tank. Icy air comes from the ventilation and Hyperion turns into an ice statue. The villains are locked in cells. Barton says that they could not find only Modok. Tony says that Modok and the Widow are not in the tower. The Falcon is trying to track where they teleported to. But Stark says that there is a more serious problem. The Red Skull is attacking New York and Europe and Asia. The Skull using the Tesseract is everywhere. Stark remains to defend New York. The rest of the Avengers go to different cities of the world. Thor attacks the Skulls in Stockholm, Barton in Brazil, the Hulk in Cairo, the Captain protects Sydney. The Avengers successfully destroy the Skull robots, but the villain himself is too strong. The Skull blinds the Falcon's eye, then teleports Thor's hammer to an unknown direction. The villain breaks the Falcon's wings and Sam falls into the ocean. The Captain in Australia rushes at the Skulls but he destroys the captain's shield with the power of space and Steve falls into the sea and Cairo the skull deprives the Hulk of reason and when he falls into a mad rage, transfers him and everyone the Avengers to New York. Thor knocks down the uncontrollable Hulk. The Falcon sits on Barton's flying motorcycle and takes the blinded archer away from the Hulk. The captain informs Tony that they need a plan. Tony frees the villains of the clique Dracula, Hyperion, and Atuma appear in Central Park next to the Avengers. The villains rush at the Skulls. He is stunned at first by this attack, but quickly recovers and throws the villains to the ground. Hyperion says that now is the best time to destroy the Avengers, but Atuma suggests dealing with the Skull first. 
The villains attack their former leader again. Tony asks the captain to remind the Hulk who he really is. Thor briefly restrains the Hulk, and the captain orders the Hulk to stop fighting. The Hulk regains consciousness. The Hulk rushes at the skulls and throws him to the ground. The skull escapes through the portal. The widow gets in touch and says that Madoc told her how to close the portals of the skull. She downloads the data and programs Barton's arrows. The skull reappears over the park, but Hawkeye closes his portals one by one, preventing the villain from escaping. Captain America swoops on the skulls and drops him to the ground. The Hulk, Thor, Atuma, and Hyperion are holding the skulls. Dracula is preparing to drink his blood and make him his slave. But the captain stops him the skull shoots a beam from his chest the avengers pull the villains away and save their lives the skull takes off again but his suit suddenly falls apart madoc and stark arrive madoc returns tony his armor the skull holds in the hands of the tesseract he opens the portals behind the avengers the skull triumphs but the hammer returns to thor from the portal thor throws the hammer at the skulls and the villain drops the tesseract the skull and the tesseract fly into the portal. Madoc says that the clique will destroy the Avengers another time and teleport with the rest of the villains. Burden regains his sight. He asks where the widow is. Tony and the captain say it's secret. The widow informs Fury that the skull and the tesseract are in another dimension. In the depths of space, the skull transmits the tesseract to Thanos. Thor and Hulk are fighting a giant monster in the snowy mountains. Their actions are coordinated by Stark from the Avengers Tower. The Hulk jumps up and hits the monster in the jaw. The monster falls. The Hulk high-fives Thor. Tony watches Captain America and the Falcon deal with Hydra soldiers and their heavy laser cannon. The heroes destroy dangerous weapons and Stark switches at Barton and the Widow. They fly in Natasha's car and shoot back at Modoc soldiers. Tony ends the communication. Session. Jarvis advises Tony to find a hobby. Stark shows Jarvis his father's notes in the Arsenal Project Records folder. Jarvis reports that an armed alien ship has entered the atmosphere. Tony rushes to intercept. He sees the ship, but alien fighters begin to attack it. Stark commands a general gathering of the Avengers. Iron Man is attacked by fighters. Jarvis reports that the ships do not belong to any of the alien races known to him. There are no living organisms on the fighters. These are drones. The Avengers arrive and destroy the drones one by one. A civilian plane will fall under drone fire, but Thor and Tony manage to land it safely. Tony informs the Avengers that the flagship was the first to appear. The Falcon reports that there is biological activity on it. The captain says that the ship is not attacking, but running away. Tony grabs the hull of the ship, but the drones attack him. The ship explodes. The Falcon analyzes the wreckage and says that most of the hull was not damaged and the passenger could to survive. Stark asks Thor to get a drone sample to study. After analyzing the drone fragment, Tony calculates the location of the ship's hull. The Avengers arrive there and open the ship. Inside they find a frightened Red Skull. The Skull is afraid of a mad titan named Thanos. The Avengers are attacked by drones. Robots land from aircraft and attack the heroes. Stark shoots one of the robots with a repulsor, but cannot damage it. On the robot the Hulk jumps, but he puts up a protective field and throws the Hulk away. The robot beats off Thor's hammer and shoots the Thunder God with a laser. The captain covers the skulls. He notices a strange box in the hands of the skull. A red stone falls out of the box. The captain takes it in his hand and starts screaming in pain. He is overwhelmed with power. The captain sees Thanos. Waves of power radiate from the red stone. They destroy robots and drones. The captain throws a stone. He does not let the widow take the stone and puts it back in the box. Thor informs that it is a power stone, one of six stones forged from an unknown substance. The Falcon informs that another batch of drones is on the way. The Avengers take the skulls and fly away. In the Avenger, Tony talks about the Arsenal project. He wants to use the power stone to launch it. But the problem is that Stark does not know where the arsenal is. The Widow says she knows the place indicated in Tony's father's records. The Avengers are flying to Russia. They arrive in the city of the Lost Forest. There was a, a gamma energy leak. On the spot, Tony realizes that the arsenal has absorbed all the energy of the gamma explosion. A huge ship arrives to the city. Drones attack the Avengers, Hulk, 
Thor and the captain engage in battle and smash the drones one by one, Tony Widow, Barton and Skull enter the hall with a gamma reactor. Inside they they see the Arsenal robot. Tony hands the Power Stone to the Hulk and asks him to deliver it to the Arsenal. The Hulk manages a second before the explosion. The Hulk activates the Arsenal and it absorbs all the gamma energy. The captain asks for support. Tony activates the Arsenal battle mode and orders to destroy the invaders. The Arsenal takes off and attacks a huge ship. The Avengers join the attack. The ship falls to the ground. The Avengers return to the tower. Arsenal updates the interface and informs that energy storage is his secondary function, and the main one is to be Tony Stark's friend. Tony's father created Arsenal as a friend and defender for his son. Tony and Arsenal go to play baseball. In the Lost Forest, Thanos gets out of the burning ship. He hits the ground with his fist and the buildings around begin to collapse. Dear friends, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel. This is important to me.